technologies alter our conception of time, and they alter our conception of space, and they alter our conception of almost everything. Technologies are very um, awesome and serious uh, human inventions because they're not simply matters of um, carrying uh, information, even new kinds of information. They are, as I tried to say, uh, ways of restructuring the way we think the world is. Postman's warnings against scientism and technicism are similar to those of many other thinkers, such as Walker, Percy, Jacques Ellul, G.K. Chesterton, and C.S. Lewis. But since Postman's area of expertise is communications theory, he focuses more than his predecessors on the way in which the way we think about the world has been influenced by communications technology, even in its earliest forms. Up until the telegraph, people could only move information as fast as they could move, which at that time by train was about 35 miles an hour. Now, one has to take uh, seriously what happens to the human psyche and eventually to social institutions if space as a factor in human communication uh, is, is eliminated and, uh, e and time becomes almost uh, irrelevant in the movement of information. Uh, what kind of uh, people are we if information moves at the speed of light and in addition to that, if it comes in very diverse forms and in enormous volume. I mean, this is the question uh, in a way I try to address in the book. The categories you use in the book, you distinguish between tool-using cultures, technocracies, and technopolies. Could you quickly summarize what those three yes. are? Yes. Uh, what I meant by a tool-using uh, culture is a culture that um, uh, has technologies, of course human cultures have always had technologies, but invents them mostly to solve uh, problems in the material and natural environment or uh, to uh, supplement and support and amplify uh, certain symbolic systems, a religion for example or um, uh, education. I mean, the building of, uh, of a temple in, uh, uh, in uh, early times was, uh, was not done because you could build temples. It was done for uh, a very specific reason related to the religious system of the people. So in tool-using cultures, technologies are, in fact, tools to serve either uh, the solution of uh, material problems or what you might call uh, symbolic problems. Now, uh, a technocracy is a culture that begins to invent for the sake of invention. I mean, uh, uh, Alfred North Whitehead once said the greatest invention of the 19th century was the invention of invention. That is, we learned how to invent things. And so technology becomes an important part of a culture begins to take on a life of its own, has its own agenda, so, so, so to say, but does not destroy in the process the uh, humanistic, traditional, social values of the culture. There exists a kind of tension between the old world and the new, so that religious systems and education systems and uh, family relations and so on can still exist in, in uh, under siege, perhaps, but in somewhat of, the, of their traditional form. Now, when we get to technopoly, I use that term to indicate a culture in which uh, traditional modes of uh, human association uh, become almost irrelevant and the entire culture places itself at the service of the sovereignty of technology so that we must alter all of our aspirations, all of our motivations to fit the possibilities of technology. In a technopoly, would it be fair to say that there are some people, some contemporary people, 
for whom their tools are, in a sense, all there is to their reality. Uh, and actually, I'm thinking of tools not just in terms of uh, of machines, but uh, I, there's one class I have actually thought of. The, the, the deconstructionists uh, seem to be people who've been reduced to their tools of, of criticism. <laughs> well, I mean, I think uh, uh, a, a deconstruction, uh, which is not so easy to define, uh, but I would say it's, it's a, an example of uh, what happens when people lose, and lose rather quickly, uh, more traditional narratives around which to organize their lives. I mean, in a way, uh, deconstruction is the, uh, uh, the final frontier <laughs> where you say, well, you, can, you can't even trust meaning itself. I mean, that, that, that language, we used to say language is a map of reality. And it seems as if the deconstructionists are saying, well, it's a map, but there's no reality. And therefore, you can make the map any way you wish. So that I, I, I usually think of it as a rather psychopathic expression of a sense of loss that most of us have as the great god of technology sweeps sweeps over the land. But uh, speaking about people who... Uh, make technology uh, their whole universe. I should mention that about six months ago, I went to buy a Honda Accord, and the salesman said that it had cruise control, for which there was an extra charge. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, what is the problem to which cruise control is the answer? Mm -hmm. Well, the question took him by surprise. But he recovered long enough to say, well, it's the problem of keeping your foot on the gas. And I said that I'd been driving for over 35 years, and I'd never found that a problem. Then he told me about the electric windows. And I, of course, asked him the same question. What is the problem to which electric windows are the solution? And he said, well, it seems ready for me this time. He said, it's the solution of of winding the windows up and down with your arm. And I told him, well, that's not been a problem either. And in fact, I, I rather value the exercise it gave me because I'm an academic and I don't get a chance to, to move parts of my body very often. Um, now, uh, I eventually bought the Honda. And it, the, it has electric windows and it has uh, cruise control. And it turns out that you can't buy this model without electric windows and, and cruise control, which is a very important point because what it tells us is that new technologies, rather than increasing people's options, very often restricts their options. I mean, you can't take a boat to Europe anymore. Uh, and I can tell you, since I did it once, that it is a most thrilling and civilized way to do it but you're going to have to take an airplane. Now, there are a lot of people, when they talk about technology, always talk about how it will expand possibilities. And it's very hard to get them to say a, uh, an intelligible word on the possibilities of its limiting something that they value. You know, I've never argued, Ken, that uh, technologies uh, uh, aren't blessings. Uh, I have rather said that they are like Faustian bargains. They giveth and they taketh away. And so um, the reason I uh, write so much about what they taketh away is that uh, living in America as we do, we are surrounded by lovers of technology. Americans are crazy about technology. So we need some balance in the way we think about this.